the training for the uh, BDS team. So before we begin, uh, let us pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for giving us another day to worship you and to receive training in order to be raised as the absolute disciple to proclaim the correct gospel to the new comers. Would you establish the kingdom of God in this place? Amen. Amen. As the correct gospel be imprinted within ourselves, may the partisan of God be established within us as well. And just Christ in your faith. Amen. 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 Alright, so as you take your test, do not think of it as a test, but think of it as a part of raising the partisan of the word within yourself. So today's uh, title is The Children of God Who Are Victorious in Spiritual Men. It is very uh, important to to really focus on this topic because even if you receive salvation, many Christians they fall into trials, right? Because they are not victorious in their spiritual path. So, good to spiritual. So, why don't we read uh, today's scripture reading, Ephesians chapter six twelve. Ephesians chapter 6, 12. It is also recorded at the top of the, of the page. Okay, let's read it in one voice. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the rulers, against the authorities, 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 so as we uh, talk about the intro, the first thing that you need to mention to the newcomers is to change your perspective. Right. Even if there is the same problem, how, depending on how you perceive the uh, problem, right, the answers that you will give will be different. Right? Same thing. Like, before he met Christ, before this newcomer met God through Christ, like how they perceived everything is physical. All they did was fight physically, right? Among people because of their emotions or their scars of the past, right? But after you met God through Christ, right? You need to change your perspective. You need to change your perception, how you perceive everything. Why? Because Christ has finished everything, right? That covenant must be imprinted within that new covenant. Because Christ has finished everything, all the problems, conflicts, and hardships that you face right now is not a problem, right? So you should help them to interpret, to perceive everything in the eyes of the gospel. Right? So spiritually. Right? And in the intro, it says we must know our enemy first, right? The object of our fight, right? Who is the enemy that we are fighting against, right? It's not people, right? But the spiritual being called Satan, Satan, right? So even though it is not mentioned in the intro, why don't we look up uh, First Peter chapter five, seven, verse eight. Would you uh, take this item, read it for us? First Peter chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Amen. 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 Even right now, it is mentioned the activity of Satan, like a roaring lion trying to devour somebody, right, who is caught up with their own anxieties is caught up with their own concerns, right? They are the targets for Satan to attack. So as soon as you become a child of God, you need to cast all your anxieties upon God because He cares for you, right? Ever since you become a child of God, all you have to do is entrust everything to God because God is with you 24-7, right? You need to help them to enjoy this conviction, this assurance that trying God is with them. Right? That is the first step of being victorious in the spiritual battle. Amen. Also, in 
James chapter 4, verse 7. Are they going to sell? Would you please read for us? James 4, 7. 4, 7. Four, seven. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Says, resist the devil. Right? It means fight the spiritual fight against Satan. Resist mm -hmm. the devil. Because even though you receive the blessing of salvation, of course, Satan cannot take away your blessing of salvation. But what he can do is he can deceive you right? through people, through the sayings, the words of people, through the emotions, atmospheres that you feel, right? So we need to resist the devil. How can we resist? Based on the puppy message proclaimed last week, we need to personalize the word, right? So you need to tell them, right? No matter what happens throughout six days of your week, when you come to church on Sunday, you need to have this resolution that I'm going to receive all the answers regarding my problem. Because God has already given us the answer through the pulpy message, right? So the only way to resist the devil is to be successful in worship. So once again, you need to emphasize the importance of worship to the newcomers, right? As a child of God, you need to come to church, right? Not because it is good to be in this congregation, but to really receive the God-given answers, directions, all the guidance through the Word. It is, it is the only way to resist the devil. Because in Matthew chapter 4, when Satan tried to tempt Jesus, what he did is really quoted the Bible verses from the Old Testament, and he actually drove out the demon, right? Mm -hmm. So the only way to win against Satan is holding onto the correct covenant. Mm -hmm. And you need to really emphasize this to the newcomers. Okay? So moving on to the body, the main part says spiritual reality spiritual reality so what you need to emphasize here many people are prone to focus on the facts such as reality and the truth right? all they do is focus on what they can see what is tangible, what is physical, right? But we need to go beyond. As a child of God, we must be able to see the spiritual reality. The spiritual reality, mm -hmm. right? And he said, what is Satan's activity that takes place within the spiritual reality? It says, right, Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1 through 6, right? Satan tempted Adam and Eve, right? And made them to really disbelieve God's promise. So they ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? So in short, this belief, what he does is to put this belief within yourself, mm -hmm. right? Even if you are saved, if you are caught up with this belief, you won't be able to receive grace, mm -hmm. right? So what you need to emphasize to newcomers is, right, do not be deceived by Satan, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how this disbelief this comes to you? It is very convincing, very convincing and very rational, right? When you hear the words of people, they are very convincing, mm -hmm. right? And they are very rational and they are very scientific. Sometimes when you listen to the word of God, it seems like it is not convincing at all. It is not rational at all. Right? It is not scientific at all. Mm -hmm. But think about if you look at Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 14. Right? There are two groups. Right? The 12 spies were sent to really go out and spy on the land of Canaan. Right? Mm -hmm. And they came back and gave a report to Moses. And they were divided into two groups, right? First group really held on to what is convincing, what is rational, what is very scientific. We can conquer the land because they are 
much stronger, right? Their, their body size is much greater than I, right? So we can conquer the world. That man, right? They were very convincing, rational, scientific. However, Joshua and Caleb, right? It may seem very not convincing, right? Irrational, unscientific to those who do not believe in God. But you know who ultimately won, right? Who was very used for conquering the land of Ten. It was Joshua and Caleb. Right? Mm -hmm. They held to the complete covenant. Right? You need to once again emphasize how important it is to hold on to the correct covenant that aligns with desire, will mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So when you correctly hold on to the word, right, that is when your disbelief will be broken. Okay? Because this is the only channel through which Satan attacks you. Right? So always be alert. Right? Be alert. Not to be deceived by your disbelief. And it says, Satan is the fallen angel. Fallen angel. Right? And he is the father of lies. John chapter 8, verse 44. Right? He will all, always deceive you. Right? So do not be deceived by his lies. Right? And he is the one with the authority of the air. And he is the ruler of this world. Right? And the only way you can win against Satan is to really enjoy the establishment of the kingdom of God. Right? How, how can you enjoy the kingdom of God? By holding on to the word and going to prayer. Right? That is the only way you can enjoy the kingdom of God. Amen. And in, and in third point, it says the meaning of the name Satan is deceiver. Right? deceiver. Right? Through his deception, what he does is not allowing you to enjoy the spiritual blessings. Right? He's going to allow you to do everything that is physical, but he's not going to allow you to do only one thing. That is to enjoy the spiritual blessings that have been given to the children of God. So do not be deceived. Because Satan, the name itself, means deceiver. And the fourth point, the meaning of the name devil is divine. No matter how convincing your word may be, right, if that word will divide, will bring division among people, that is not gospel centered. No matter how 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 in intelligent, how smart you are, right? Whatever you choose or whatever you say will bring about division among people, and that is not aligned with the gospel. Right? You need to always mention this to new believers, new believers, right? You're not choosing what is right. You're not choosing what is very very what is very um, scientific, but you're choosing what is right before the eyes of God. That is your standard, right? Always with your choice must be aligned with saving people, not killing people, not oppressing people, but saving everyone, right? Whatever you choose, your decision, your choice, your words, always have to be aligned with saving people because the gospel itself saves everyone, right? So devil means divider. So whenever there is division among people, that means they are not being guided by the Holy Spirit. Even though they say they love God, they know Jesus Christ, but if there is division among people, that itself says, we are not being deceived, we are not being guided by the Holy Spirit. Right? Rather, you are being guided by the devil, the Satan. So the name of the meaning of the name devil means divider. And another name is demons. Right? They are. They are Satan's minions, right? Mm -hmm. they, are, they are the ones who are doing Satan's errands. Mm -hmm. right? And they are the evil spirit. They're fallen angels, right? So all these, what they do is to break the relationship with God mm -hmm. through their deception, through division, and through all the physical means. So this is the spiritual reality that you need to see with their spiritual eyes. So in, in the intro, I said you need to change the perspective, perception of a newcomer, 
right? Do not perceive it physically, but perceive it spiritually. Everything. And this Satan, what he does, he has 12 strategies. Even though he says 12 problems of life, we can also say it is Satan's 12 strategies. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So the first strategy that he always uses is Genesis chapter 3. Mm -hmm. You all know, are familiar with this concept, right? Me-centered, self-centered. Right? And this problem, this strategy of Genesis chapter 3 is the start. The start of all curses. Right? As soon as Adam and Eve thought that we can also become like God, that is the start of their disaster. Right? They were separated from God. Right? Where it is where did it start? From believing that they also can become like God. Be centered. And the second strategy is Genesis chapter 6, right? It says material center, but you can also say money. 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 Right? And when you talk about this second strategy, you must uh, pinpoint the fact that you guys are spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. No matter how much money you have, because you're spiritual beings, if you are separated from God, you can never, ever get eternal satisfaction. Mm -hmm. It is because this spiritual void that you have within yourself can only be filled when you meet God. Right? You need to always see God. Money is not the ultimate goal in your life. The ultimate goal in your life is meeting God. Restore this relationship with God once again. And the third strategy that Satan uses is success. 11 is success. They, they think that uh, having a large house is success. They think that having a luxurious car is success. But from the eyes of God, that is not true success. Right? From God's perspective, the true success is being inside of God. Mm -hmm. True success is being inside of God. Mm -hmm. That's why evangelist Paul wrote this letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. Be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. Right? Being inside of God, who is the source of the eternal satisfaction, right? is true success. And fourth strategy is Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13 says, divination. In Korean, it is called muso, right? Muso. Because they are very concerned about their future, right? All people without God can never be happy, but caught up with anxieties about their future, right? So they have to rely on divinations, right? They have to go to these fortune tellers and get their fortunes told. Why? Because they want to know about their future. However, once you are inside of God, you don't have to worry about the future because <coughs> God guarantees everything in your life. God is completely guiding your life. Right? Divination. And at chapter 16, it says fortune tellers, right? It is in Korean it is called Jamsu. Right? It also starts because people are concerned and anxious about their future. Anxious, right? And sixth point is Acts chapter 19. Right? It says idol culture, idol worship. Right? It's very strange, but even though like Thailand or like you know all the countries in the Southeast Asia, right, they do not consult with each other. But when you go to their countries, what you can see is the temple with the great idols, right? Mm -hmm. Their like summits have never met each other, right? and consulted with them, hey, we are going to build this temple, right? That looks very alike. But they've never done this. But when you go to their countries, right? Strangely, what you can see is the great temples, right? Great shrines of idols where people can really, you know, 
but light the candle, like you know, like you know, worship before the shrines, right? Because, as it says, Satan is the ruler of this world, right? Who can transcend time and space? So they, so Satan takes control of all the leaders of the world, right? That is why, even though they haven't consulted with each other, right, all the countries that has no gospel, right, have this great temples, great shrines, idol worshiping places. And as a result, what happens is John chapter 8, verse 24. Right, child of the devil. Child of the devil. Okay. That is the seventh point. The reason why you face continuous disasters before you met God is because you belong to Satan. Mm. That is the only reason. The reason why curses befall your life is because you belong to Satan. Okay? You need to mention this. But now, after you being a child of God, you don't have to worry about this because mm. your identity has changed mm. through Jesus Christ. Amen. And eighth point, right? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. <clears throat> Once again, like idol problems, idol worship. Because you are spiritually blind. As soon as you are separated from God, your spiritual eyes are completely blind. So instead of worshiping God, you are worshiping something else. And we call this idol worship. Mm -hmm. It is very natural to seek God in your life. Right? So because people are spiritually blind, they are bound to worship something else. And we call that idol. Right? Idol can be the physical shrines, but it can also be success, money, right? What you cherish more than you do towards God. And because people are not connected with God, right? They are bound to face mental problems. Matthew chapter 11. Right? Jesus said, come to me who are weary and burdened. Right? No matter how how successful you are, no matter how much money you have, right? Ultimately, right, all you have is burden. In your life. That is why people are afflicted with, you know, mental disorders, right? Depressions, right? Hallucinations. They hear something, right? Things like that. And incurable diseases. And not only they are afflicted mentally. They also have the physical problems at chapter 8. Verses 4 to 8. Physical problems, right? Incurable diseases. People are having you know, physical problems in their life. And many people think that, oh, if the life that I have on this earth is the only life that I have, all I have to do is end my life. Just kill yourself. They think that that is the end of their life, but the Bible says that is not so, right? There is an eternal world awaiting for you, right? Either hell or heaven. Right? So we call that afterlife problems. No matter how diligently you live your life while you live on this earth, if you if you were not able to meet God, if you are not able to resolve the original sin, you are bound to go to hell. Right? Luke chapter 16, 19, 31. After life problems. And last false point is the next generation problems. Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 to 5. If this curses, right, really ends with my life, all I have to do is endure it. But this spiritual curse will absolutely be passed down unto next generations mm. right? this curse is continues on and on and on no one can cut it off right except through Jesus Christ and we call this destiny no one can come up with destiny with their power with their resolution with their strong will you can come out of this only through Jesus Christ right so Romans chapter 8 verse 2 there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? 
now you are in Christ, so you are not going to be condemned. Or you are not going to be cursed. You are not going to be judged. Why? Because your spiritual address is inside of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Amen. All these problems, all these Satan strategies have nothing to do with you. All you have to do is fight the spiritual fight against Satan, who are going to use these strategies to deceive you and be victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to answer. And moving on to the third point. <coughs> what is the activity of Satan? Right? He will make you always go against God. Mm. Against God. Mm. So whenever you have a conflict with people, you need to ask yourself, am I against God? Mm. Or am I in the direction of establishing the kingdom of God. You need to always ask the question. You need also help them to ask the question, right? When you leave your walk of faith in church, right? There might be conflicts, there might be crisis, but do not be discouraged. All you have to do is ask yourself the correct question. Am I against God or am I for God? Right? Simple question. And Satan always comes as the angel of light. Angel of light. In short, he deceives you, mm. right? By making you think that, oh, I'm actually doing it for the glory of God. But deep inside of you, if you look at your hidden motive, that is not so. Right? So you can also talk about this hidden motive. Sumun right? Satan always comes to you as the angel of light. Right? So whenever you do your work in your ministry, when you're doing something for church, right, you need to always check up on your motive. Right? Am I really having the correct motive? Or is it a false motive? And Satan works using the powers and authorities of the evil realm, right? It is the kingdom of Satan. And the only way to break down the kingdom of Satan is establishing the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 12, verses 28. When the Holy Spirit is at work, right? Satan will flee and the kingdom of God will be established. And Satan brings mental and physical diseases, hardship, persecutions, and family discord, right? When you become a child of God, you were once his child. But when your identity, when your status changed, right, Satan will no longer be your father, but he will become your <coughs> eternal enemy. That's why he will bring you curses, he'll bring you persecutions, he'll bring you discord in your family, right? And unbelief. But do not be this. Cursed, right? Because Christ has won the world on the cross. So the fourth point, what is trying to say is, Satan is going to use whatever it takes to bring you down, but do not be deceived. Think about in terms of persecution, right? The early church was persecuted just because they gathered in the name of Jesus Christ. But who won in the end? The ones who held on to the correct covenant of only Christ, only the kingdom of God, and only the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And fifth point, he shoots and attacks believers using flaming arrows, mm. right? He's aiming at you. Whenever you are caught up with your disbelief, mm. he's going to shoot these flaming arrows to mm. bring you down. Mm. So you need to fight this spiritual fight 24. How? By enjoying Christ 24. Mm. Right? That's all you have to do enjoying Christ 24. That is why the fourth point, there is only one unique solution to be victorious in the spiritual battle. It is the offspring of woman, Jesus Christ. As soon Mm -hmm. as they committed the original sin against God, God gave them this unique solution. The offspring of woman will crush the head of Satan, head of the serpent. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, the reason the Son of God appeared, right? The reason God sent His only 
son to this earth mm -hmm. is to destroy the devil's work. That is why Satan fears the name of Jesus Christ only. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can be victorious in the spiritual battle is using the name, the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. okay? And the end result of Satan, right? They are bound to go to hell, right? So before they are sent to hell, what they're going to do on this earth is to bring as many people as possible to hell, mm -hmm. right? That's why they use deceptions, disbeliefs, and all these 12 strategies so people cannot meet God. Mm -hmm. This is what they do. So the only way you can break down Satan's activity is to use the name of Jesus Christ. And as a conclusion, it says, challenge towards new confidence, right? When you become a child of God, when you have a new spiritual identity, right? New conflicts will come. Why? Satan, who used to be your father, becomes your eternal enemy. So he's going to bring all the persecutions, hardships, right? It says discords right in your families. Like, but do not be discouraged. Do not be disheartened. But challenge towards new conflicts, right? Because if that is a real problem, right? If that is a real problem, for you to renew yourself, renew, mm. change yourself. And if you have a crisis, do not escape from this, do not go away from it. But actually go into the crisis and what you need to do is take it as an opportunity to enjoy the power of God. Because as soon as you become a child of God through Christ, the triune God is your background. You need to help them to know that, right? Triune God is your background. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. But God is completely guiding your life through the Holy Spirit. And at the end, we see the one paragraph of prayer, right? So what you can do is end this meeting with this prayer by mm -hmm. making him or her follow this prayer. Right? Mm -hmm. So why don't we uh, follow this prayer uh, word by word, okay? God, thank you for changing my status. God, thank, thank you for changing my status. From child of the devil. From child of the devil. To the child of God. To the child of God. Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Help me to know the spiritual reality. Help me to know the spiritual reality of Satan. Of Satan. And be victorious. And be victorious. In the spiritual battle. In the spiritual battle. Help me to fight the spiritual battle. Help, Help me to fight the spiritual battle using the, using the authority of Jesus. Using the authority of Jesus. And enjoy the guarantee of success. And enjoy the guarantee of success. So that I can proclaim the peace of Jesus Christ. So that I can proclaim the peace of God, Jesus Christ. With my life. With my life. I pray all these things. I pray all these things. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Who came as the Christ. Who came as the Christ. Amen. Amen. You can also give this prayer to him or her as a mission mm. that they can really pray this throughout the six days of the week. Mm. So this is it. And any any questions? I think last time I didn't ask this question. Any questions after hearing this uh, third week training? <laughs> Everything clear? <laughs> There is no question. Okay. I think uh, I can just add any any announcement. Oh, yeah, like you know, we have one discussion because next week we are scheduled to have a basketball right. like in a camp for mm -hmm. our YM. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of thinking I, it's kind of you know a matter of discussion. Maybe like according to 